Hi, I'm Robert Joseph, and today I'm going to teach you how to make this wrestling brief. So I have gotten a lot of requests for something like this. Um, I will say that it is similar to the swim brief, although the swim brief is shorter um, in the length here of the whole, the whole body. So the wrestling brief, in turn, is much longer in the body. It sits a bit higher on the waist, um, which means it has a longer leg um, length, but without increasing really the total width of the inseam. So the total width of the inseam is approximately about four inches once you get it finished. So there are just three seams in this. So it's the two side seams and it's the one crotch or inseam. And I'm just gonna turn this to the side a little bit. So we have the side seam here. Um, and then of course uh, the rear, there is no center back seam or center front seam. Um, so it's actually really easily um, customizable um, because of that factor that you don't have a lot of seams. Now I make a big deal about sewing this together in the uh, video. So um, just be aware that if you don't wanna watch the whole video, that there are uh, chapter markers down below in the description. And this one uh, is unique. And in, in that um, when you purchase this, you also get the sew, written sewing instructions. So that's something that I'm doing now with my newer patterns. Um, so uh, never fear. This is probably one of the easier things that you're going to actually sew together if you haven't, haven't already tried my sewing brief. So we will get right into cutting out the fabric right now. Okay, so we have everything cut out, and before I move on, um, I want to correct something. Um, if you've been paying attention and you can read what's on my pattern. So I have mislabeled the back pattern piece. This is the back pattern piece. They both say front. Um, this is the back, so I'm going to um, cross it out. We're really not going to be using these anymore. Um, but on the pattern that you purchased, um, it will say back. So I just copied things over and didn't, um, forgot to write back on that instead of front. Now, another thing, just a reminder, I'm only lining the front. You can line both. That's up to your preference. But understand if you're swimming in this um, and you line the back, you may get some drag um, in the water because of the added um, layer of fabric there. Now, of course, you don't have to line it at all if you don't want to. Um, that's up to you. But um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and line the front. 
So I'm gonna remove the pieces I don't want. The first thing I'm going to do is attach the lining to the front. So let me move these pieces off the table. And also the back, we'll just move the back over here. So now I cut this with the face sides to face side. When I say face side, that means the right side of the fabric. I don't, um, I try not to say the right side of the fabric because there is a right and a left side of the body. So I don't want any confusion. So now I folded that. This is hard to tell. I know this is a dark fabric, um, but this is the face side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open this up. Now this is all the face side and I'm gonna flip this over so I see the wrong side. So again, the wrong side of the fabric is face up. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the lining, and this lining um, is called Helenka, H-E-L-E-N-C-A. If you're out there looking for a lightweight, really stretchy lining, your lining should always stretch as much, if not more, than your fashion fabric. So um, I've done the same thing. So I've uh, cut with face sides together when I had fold folded, and we want the face side to be against our body. So in this case, we're gonna match the wrong side to the wrong side of the lining to the wrong side of the fashion fabric or your brief fabric. And be careful with your lining because it is so stretchy. You don't want to stretch it out. And sometimes I just kind of use my fingers and just kind of pat it around into place. And that looks pretty good. I know it looks a little bit off here, but it probably shrunk in that few minutes that I had. Um, normally you would wanna let your fabric rest for about 30 minutes, especially really stretchy stuff um, before you cut it. Um, I just didn't have that luxury this time. So instead of pinning it, I'm gonna use these clips. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste the lining all the way around and then I will remove the basting um, before I turn all the elastics and I'll walk you through that. So the parts that I'm going to baste are first around the legs and I'm going to be really careful not to stretch that as I sew and I'm going to use a long stitch and the lining is going to be on the feed dog side and that will help um, decrease the chance of anything of the lining stretching too much. So I'll do this long area, um, the leg opening area, I'm sorry, um, and then I'm gonna do the waist area. These are the largest parts. Um, and I'm probably gonna go ahead and do the sides as well. Um, now, a little side note here, I did not put any notches on the side seams or in the crotch um, area or the inseam area um, because I felt that it was kind of obvious that you're gonna sew the side seams of the front and the back and then the crotch. There are only really three seams to this. Um, suit, so I don't I didn't feel like uh, notches were really that necessary So I'm gonna get these uh, clips put on here um, Just to hold it in place while I'm over at the machine and I'm just gonna clip um, These are really nice. I started using these clips instead of pins because sometimes when I get going and I'm pinning um, I'm pinning on the wrong side of the fabric for the direction that I want to sew um, just be careful when you're doing the basting stitches to hold these um, together um, that you're not stretching anything out um, as you're in the machine. Okay, and I think that's all I need. Um, so it makes it really easy if I, if I need to go a different direction. I don't have to worry which side is pinned on. So I'm going to run over to the machine and we could get this basted all up and then we'll, I'll be right back here.
Okay, so now that I have everything um, basted along here, I know that's hard to see. I have it done in black thread. Um, and I'm actually, before I move on, one thing right now, and I had that little piece of paper set aside with a note on the pattern that said, if you're gonna be using a drawstring, um, you need to do the buttonhole before you do the elastic on the waist before you um, install the elastic. So that's what I'm going to do now before I sew anything together. It's just easier with one piece. Now if you get to the side seams and the crotch inseam, same, that's fine as long as you do it before um, you put the elastic on. So that's what I'm going, going to do. So, and there is a note on here that it needs to be done within the one inch. So this pattern calls for one inch elastic. So I have a one inch um, ruler here to see through it's hard for you to see it probably um, and I'm just gonna lay it here and I can mark where that one inch fold over is and let me grab the elastic again really quickly so this is the elastic you can also use your elastic when this is in here um, we're gonna attach it like this and then we're gonna be folding it over so it's over to the inside your buttonhole or your opening for your drawstring has to be within this area unless you're going to have it on the outside. Now if you're going to put it on the outside it needs to be within you need to measure down two inches so this is where the bottom let me put a pin so you can kind of see it I know again it's hard with this dark fabric so this is where the bottom of the elastic would be folded to so if I fold this over Pretend like this is on, I've sewn this on. Okay, so I fold this over and you can kind of see this is the fold over here. But on the outside, you have within this area between the folded edge and the bottom of the elastic to put your uh, buttonhole. But I'm gonna put mine on the inside. So just be aware of that. First of all, I have to find the center so I'm going to fold this in half. Okay, there's my center front. And then I can take my ruler, and I had another one with some, if you have clear rulers like this, um, you can put, I had one where I had, uh, blue, here it is. Uh, I put some blue painter's tape um, on the back so you can see through it. And if I put this here, here's my center, and then I'm gonna put a little chalk mark. Of course, you could just use a pin um, as well, not really a pin on this dark, if it were lighter. So this is the area here. I'm gonna mark here where the center is, and who knows if I'll get, well, I'll try to get it in the center. So my buttonhole works um, the top of the buttonhole, then it goes backwards, and then it comes forward again. So this is, should be about the center where I want that buttonhole. And I'm probably gonna place it, hmm, probably right about there where my pin is. Um, because remember, you're gonna have overlocking here where we're gonna overlock the elastic too. So that's approximately about where it's going to be. So I've just got my um, buttonhole already set up on my machine. One other note is, again, I've mentioned this in several of my videos that when you're sewing, doing the buttonhole, this, the sewing machine, a regular sewing machine doesn't like to sew knits because it stretches in the feed dogs. Sometimes the feed dogs will just stretch the fabric instead of moving the fabric. So in this case, it's best to use some sort of stabilizer. And uh, this is uh, rip away, and I can just rip this off. And this is what embroiderers use um, uh, to give it some, to give the embroidery some st stability. So I think these are way too, these pieces are way too large, but I put one on the top and the bottom. If you don't have embroider rip away, of course you can use a piece of paper, regular copy paper, or I don't know, newspaper, if you have that. Um, just be careful that when you're pulling this out, don't just rip it out. Be very careful around the stitches. So I'm gonna go get this uh, buttonhole in here um, and then we'll be ready to move on.
Okay, so I've got the uh, buttonhole uh, done, and I'm just gonna very carefully pull this uh, rip away out. Just very I'm putting my fingernail kind of against the stitches while I'm kind of ripping it around because I don't want those stitches to come out. Now this is just chalk. I can um, use an iron or some heat to get rid of that. That's not going to be a big deal. Um, it should also kind of scratch out. It's a wax chalk, so I have to be careful that it doesn't leave a stain. Um, but that's okay. Okay, so that is in, and we can move on now. And I'm going to do this uh, the really super quick and easy way, instead of doing one step at a time. Usually I would do the side seams and then the, the crotch seam or the inseam. Um, I'm going to just clip everything together and sew everything, uh, the three seams at the uh, overlock. So again, I had this fold. This is the back piece. It was folded. I had cut it with face sides together, so I just need to open this up and then flip it over. And all I need to do is match up my side seams. And those should match up nicely. Make a bunch of noise. I'm gonna grab my clips. I'm not gonna use pins. I'm just gonna clip all three of these together. One side seam. And the second side seam. Now when I actually, when I do these myself, I don't actually clip or pin uh, because the seams are really short. Now I'm going to also go ahead and match and pin the crotch seam or inseam. I try to say it both ways so you understand what I'm meaning. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. I don't usually do this because the fabric doesn't match up perfectly because the back is actually longer than the front, so there's a fold there. But in this case, this is so quick uh, to make that we, we just have the three seams. So the side seams and the crotch inseam, uh, what I'm gonna sew right now at the serger. And I'll be right back here. Okay, so um, I have the side seams and the crotch seams done. If you noticed, um, I did have a little uh, issue in the beginning, which is here. You can kind of see some a little bit of loopiness here on that um, uh, internal needle. Um, I didn't go over it because the seam was still holding uh, really well. Um, so I just kind of fixed it. What happened was that my thread on that uh, interior, that middle needle that does the um, middle stitch here, thread was not in, the thread was not in the tension uh, discs all the way. So I just had to pull that and then continue and then you can see um, that I got a really nice perfect stitch um, after that. Okay, so that was one challenge. Now the other thing that I noticed is that here on the crotch uh, area in seam, um, I probably should have done the basting stitch across to hold the lining because you can see that the lining is very close to that stitch line. Now, if I was making this for somebody, um, I would probably rip that out and make sure that the lining gets into that seam fully all the way. Um, but this is just a sample for this, um, so I'm not really that worried about it. Um, so uh, the next step is to prepare the elastics. Okay, so we are ready to prepare the elastic. Um, and for this, I'm using a one inch wide elastic. And I've cut the length that I need, I've needed. So just make sure that you have your amounts here that you need to cut. So here are the size ranges and then the amount of elastic that you need to cut. Um, so I'm doing a medium, so I've cut 32 inches. Um, and so what I like to do is get the length of the elastic and on either ends 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my stitch line and I've got a marking tool and a ruler and I'm just going to put the ruler at the half inch mark on either side and I'm actually marking on the same side of the elastic. So notice that these marks are on the same side of the elastic. You can see that. Where am I going with the... Okay. So they're on the same side. And so when I come around, I make a loop and I'm stacking them right on top of each other on top of that line. And you want to make sure that you don't get any kind of twists in the elastic, otherwise you'll have to rip it out um, and do it over again. So just make a loop and overlap on top of those lines. And if you like, you can pin it either way before you get to the machine, you can pin it like that, or you can pin it like this, and that's fine. So now I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and stitch right across this line to make it secure. Okay, so I've got the elastic band, elastic loop, all sewn together, and it's um, nice and secure. Um, now, just double check again, all the way around the loop, that you don't have any twists in it. So what we need to do now is we need to divide this into four equal parts. So I like to fold on my stitch line, like this, and go all the way to the other side. And now you can pin this, I'll go ahead and do both ways. Um, I'm just gonna take my pin, Pen. This is a erasable uh, marker um, and I mark the opposite side and then I take that marking and I match it up to my stitch line and I've got that matched and then on either one of these, on both of these ends actually, I'm going to mark here. I'm going to put this up like this and then just mark both sides. Of course it would help if I had, you know, a large, a larger marker, but I just like to do this because then I don't have to deal with so many pins. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do that for you anyway. So I've got this all divided into fourths and I'm just going to go ahead and put a pin in here and we can actually use these same pins to pin it to the garment as well. And just so you can see that I will have four equal parts. Got that one pinned. Okay. So now I have my stitch end. So this is one, two, three, four equal parts. And now Okay, so I've cut the elastic, the two elastics for my leg opening, the length that I need. And so what I'm going to do on, uh, on each of the ends, there are two here, so I'm going to mark off a half inch. You can do more um, if you want, but I think um, a half inch is fine. So uh, you can use, I have a couple different colors of um, erasable markers, so let's see if the red one is going to work. Sometimes these dry out. So I'm just going to mark a half inch here. There we go, there's one. A half inch and then make sure your markings are on the same side of the of the elastic and this is basically the same for as what we did with the uh, waistband okay so I've got those marked now you want to make sure that you don't get any twists in these so I'm going to bring these around I'm going to lay those marks right on top of each other okay and uh, I don't have a clip. Let me grab one of those really quick. But you can just pin it or clip it together just to hold it there. We're gonna go over to the machine and stitch right across that line. I'm gonna do the same thing with this. There are actually two ways you could stitch this and I'll show you um, on each of them. Um, sometimes a zigzag uh, kind of pulls out. What I'm talking about is there's one way where you can just stitch straight across here um, using a straight stitch or you can zigzag across the entire section of the overlap part. 
Okay, so I'll do one, one zigzag and one straight stitch. Okay, so we have the uh, leg opening elastic sewn together in circles. You know, it's just a loop. Um, and just make sure, again, that you don't have any twisties. Um, so I showed you two ways. You could sew straight across the elastic, or you could zigzag the length of the um, overlap. So you decide which is gonna be best for you. It doesn't really matter because these are gonna be covered with um, overlocking and then it's gonna be turned to the inside anyway. So now to prepare the rest of the elastic. So um, if you've done it, uh, if you stitch it like, like this, you're just gonna fold on that seam to fold everything in half. Now you can either mark it with the pen like this, or you can use a pin. So usually when I'm making these, I just, uh, when I'm making any kind of underwear or swimwear, I just mark it with the pen. So then I'm gonna take that marking and I'm gonna match it back up to my original mark and then I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to mark uh, both ends of these with either the pen or the pin. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use pins. I'm going to do both for you so um, there's no confusion about what you need to do. And you're going to do this for both of the loops. So that makes it easy. I see that mark and then I can just put a pin like this on both sides. And what we're doing is dividing it into fourths. And then we will repeat this step once we get to um, the garment. So there's the one, and then we're gonna do the other one. So if you've done it with the zigzag, this may have to seem a little bit thick right here. So just find your marking, fold it on that marking line, just like we did before, and mark the opposite side with a pen or a pin. Your clips won't really work for this. Um, because you're gonna, once you get this onto the garment, you're gonna actually be stretching it. So again, you're gonna take this mark and mark and match it up to that original fold mark there. And then again, you have these two sides that you're gonna mark and pin. Mark on both sides. And I'll put pins so that when we get to the garment, you'll be able to see very clearly where you need to match. Okay, and with the pin in this one. Okay, so there we have both our leg openings marked. We don't really need one here because we can see exactly where that uh, mark is, okay? So that's it to the elastic preparation. Let's get to um, back to the garment. Okay, so we have the elastics um, prepared, um, and just a little side note, those videos, um, I actually have uh, just made the elastics video, so if some things look a little bit different, it's okay, the process is the same. So those are kind of canned videos that I uh, do for the elastic. So um, now we have the elastic separated into fourths, and um, I like to do the hard parts first, and that would be the leg opening. And the reason I say they're hard or challenging is because there's curves that you have to um, work around. Now, I like to put the elastic on the bottom uh, near the feed dogs, so I feel like it gives me a little bit more control over where the fabric is sitting on the elastic. Um, but just remember that anytime you're working with elastic, you're going to be stretching the elastic into certain parts. So uh, you will have to use your hand uh, to actually pull the fabric through. So you'll have to pull from the back of the presser foot um, to help that fabric through because you're gonna be pulling the elastic toward you to stretch it out. Now we need to actually um, divide the leg opening and the waist uh, into equal fourth, fourths. Um, on the garment as well to match the elastics to the garment. So I'm gonna do the leg opening first. Now, this is a little bit different than the other 
uh, leg opening is that we have a side seam on some of my underwear and other swim um, patterns. They don't have a side seam. Um, so uh, you probably heard me say, if you watch my other videos, I like to start it kind of behind um, in the rear section so that the uh, seam uh, where the stitch, uh, where the elastic has been stitched together doesn't, isn't as noticeable that there's some bulk there. Um, but we can't really do that right on the side seam because that will add to the bulk. So, and I like to fold my side seams toward the back. So if this is the side seam, it's the, the seam will be folded toward the back that way. So I usually choose a spot where I like this seam to go. And in this case, we can't really use the um, crotch or inseam because it's not, we could um, to divide and match it up and it kind of comes out there. But I still think that this here is too close. So what I like to do, let me fold this kind of in half so we kind of see the back and the front. Oh, that's not a good view. I thought that it would fold better. So what I'm gonna do is here's the back I think I'm gonna start it, it looks like about two and a quarter, two and a half inches past the seam on the back. And if that's my point, then I'm going to fold on that and then I'm gonna loosely, like I've done on everything else, follow the edges of the fabric. Just, and make sure you're not stretching until we get to the opposite side of that, for that fold. And then I'll put a pin. And this is the process again of dividing the leg opening into fourths. Okay, so now we have those two pins and I can match up those two pins. And then again, just carefully walk that fabric until you get to that fold to mark your pin. And it doesn't have to be exact. Just be careful that you're not stretching the fabric. And that pin doesn't like to go in. Okay, so now I've got the leg divided into fourths. This is my starting point. So I need to match that on the inside. I'm gonna match that pin. Okay, um, but I like to put the elastic on the bottom. You can do it on the, the top, it's fine, however you like to work. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm going to put a pin in it across to hold it like that. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And then I'm just going to go around and match the other pins. You don't have to stretch the elastic now. In fact, you really don't want to. Um, you just wanna match the pins. So there's one pin and then I'm gonna take this pin out and use that to hold that marker. Now, just to show you that you will be stretching, you see that extra fabric there? Once I stretch it, we're gonna stretch it to match that fabric. Match up the other pin. And I'll be able to take the other across pins out where I divided everything after this as well. And I've matched the last pin. Okay, let me see if I can lay this out so you can kind of see how that has been all pinned together, okay? So here's the elastic pinned on. Of course, it's smaller. You're gonna stretch in those sections. I'm gonna pull these extra cross pins out. That's where I divided the fabric. So I'm actually, this is where my starting point. So I'm gonna start a little bit before that to get over that uh, thickness. And again, I'll be stretching this the elastic to meet this meet the size of the suit and when I get here um, I'm gonna make sure that this seam is folded under toward um, the back because if I'm going this way it's gonna want to fold it this way so I have to just make sure you'll see me do that 
So I'm going to get this over to the serger. One note about that is I still have the two needles in there, and I'm not going to take the one thread out. I'm just going to um, sew with it. You don't have to have a four thread for attaching the elastics. You can use a three thread, and that's fine, but I'm not going to take the time to pull it out. What I am going to do is I'm going to use my longest stitch length, though. So I'm going to switch it to the longest stitch length, and I will be right back here once I get that done. Okay, so I have the leg opening elastic attached, and I'm not going to turn it yet. I'm going to do all the turning at the same time. Um, uh, all three of them I'm going to turn at the same time. So uh, now I can actually put on the waist elastic, um, and the way I need to do that is I need to find the center front and the center back, and I don't have notches for those again. So this is pretty simple. Is The way I do that, I know I have the buttonhole here, but... What I'm going to do is I'm going to match up the side seams. And because the back is slightly uh, larger than the front, just slightly, I'm going to find uh, the fold on either side and I'll put a pin. If I can get my hands to work. And the front, I think I did a pretty good job of matching the center front on the uh, buttonhole it came out pretty good then I'm gonna match those two and it may come out that it is this may have stretched a little bit huh it's a little off you see that little fold there I mean that's not really such a big deal but I'm gonna actually mark it just so you can see right there on that little bit of fold. So if it's that little, you can just use the side seams. On the larger sizes, it may be more than that though. All right, so this is the back. So I would like to start with the center back. So uh, I match my seam on my, I match the seam on the elastic to that center back mark. mark. And again, I'm gonna put the elastic on the bottom. So I'm just gonna flip this over to get this pinned on here and then I'm going to go around and just match my pin marks again you want to make sure that your seam allowance here is folded toward the back match up those pins and then I'm gonna pin this And the last one, I guess I'll use that. Okay, so I can pull these other T pins out. Now we're gonna do the same thing as with the uh, leg opening. So I'll run over to the serger, get this attached, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have uh, all the elastics on the waist and the leg opening. If you are watching um, the, that sped up video part of attaching the, the waist elastic, you may have seen um, I broke a needle. And I don't know why I broke a needle. I think maybe I was pulling too hard and I grabbed the needle as I was pulling it and it broke. I did not have another pin in there for it to hit. So I'm not sure why I broke it, but it does happen to me too.
So uh, that took me a little while to get that uh, resituated. Now, the now we have to fold over the elastic, and um, I'm going to turn this over and start it on the back. Um, when you fold over your elastic, make sure that you're folding it and you're getting it nice and flush um, against the edge of the elastic here when you fold it. You don't want any extra fabric um, messing you up. So I like to fold this over and then I'm going to pin on the outside. Now I'm using a cover stitch for this. Um, you, If you don't have a cover stitch machine, you can use a zigzag, in which case you can stitch on this side, um, the inside, oh, right over that uh, ridge. Um, so with a cover stitch machine, you actually stitch on the face side of the garment. So that's what I will be doing. I like to turn and, oh, there's one thing I forgot to do. Let me unpin this. I'm gonna step backwards for a second. So I'm not gonna correct the video. So just really quick before I fold this over, there's some things that I need to do first. The, all this uh, basting stitching that um, I did, I actually need to pull that out. So I'm gonna pull that out now before I turn everything over um, because sometimes that stitching doesn't allow me to stretch it um, the way that I need to. It was okay to leave it there for the elastic installment, but I just need to pull all this out. So um, I'm not gonna show you doing that because I think you all are probably pretty well versed in ripping stitches out and that you're probably best friends with your seam ripper. So I'll be, I'll do get all that done and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got all of the basting stitches pulled out. So back to turning everything. Um, and just remember you want to make the top edge here flush. So I'm just going to get this all pinned. Now I only usually pin the waist um, for when I'm doing this, when I'm turning the elastics, I don't usually pin the uh, leg openings uh, because it's so narrow uh, that I just kind of turn it, press and turn it as I go um, in the machine, whether I'm zigzagging or cover stitching. So now I've got the four quadrants of the waist done. Let me see if I want to do. If you want to, you can put additional pins in. I might just do that just to hold everything um, in place. Do I need to do that there? I like to just make sure that the fabric is all nice and flush around this. some twisting in it. Oh, so I forgot to rip out the stitching. I thought, why isn't it pulling? And I forgot to pull this stitching out. So I will do that now. Okay, so I'm all pinned up here and I'm just going to run over to the cover stitch machine and I'm gonna go ahead and do the waist first. Now, uh, where do I start? So this is the back. So usually if this is the center back, usually I start over kind of on the side of the back, right around somewhere a little bit after the side seam. And that's so just in case I don't come back perfectly, it's not as noticeable um, of where I started and finished. So I'm probably gonna start, I'm not gonna uh, chalk mark it, but I will let me, I'll mark this for you here. And I will have a tape on the cover stitch um, that I use as a guide for the top of this. Of course, I'm gonna be stretching this a little bit as I go along and helping it through the machine. Now, the elastic uh, waistband is actually, there shouldn't be a lot of difference from the elastic band to the garment, and that's the way I designed it. So you're stretching it for ease, because remember, you're gonna be stretching this to get it on onto you. So um, I do stretch a little bit just to make sure everything stays nice and flat. I'm also gonna be using a contrast thread. I used a neon green or a chartreuse green uh, thread on my last project, and I chose not to switch it out, which will mean that you'll be able to see all of my irregular stitching if I have any. So I'm going to get that done. I'm gonna do the waistband first, and then I'm gonna actually do the uh, leg openings. And you see here where the elastic is, uh, where I started the elastic here on the leg. That's about where I'm gonna start my stitching. I'm gonna simply kind of stretch the elastic, turn over, make sure everything is flush, and then stitch through um, on the machine. So uh, on over to the cover stitch machine, I'm going.
loops. So the last thing we have to do is a drawstring. I'm going to turn this inside out. So we have to open up this buttonhole right here. Um, and to do that, what I like to do is on one end, the end that I'm not going to start on, I put a pin across so that my hand doesn't get all crazy. Um, I'm going to hold this up here like this. So I have my seam ripper and I like to dig in between the stitches and you can see I still have some of that rip away here which will be gone when I pull this out. You want to kind of dig in on the um, inside of that bar tack on the one side and make sure that you're just grabbing the fabric and you're not getting the elastic that's on the inside and just kind of poke it through and then rip through and you can just kind of double check that you're getting all the way through the lining um, if you can actually see the elastic. I don't know if you can see that but I'm just getting to the elastic and we don't want to clip the elastic. We just want to snip and of course, we just need enough actually to get that drawstring in there. So I can see the elastic I haven't clipped through, so that's good. I can take this pin out, maybe see if I can pull some of this other stuff out. Okay, so I've got that hole there ready to go, ready to insert. Now, um, I'm running out of my regular drawstring, my polyester drawstring, um, and it's kind of hard to find, especially hard to find online. So I went ahead and bought a package of uh, these drawstring, and these are cotton, um, what does it say here? These are like uh, fur jackets or shoes. Uh, draws, just look up the sweatpant drawstring um, or something like that on Amazon and you'll these will come about. Now, these are generally longer than I say to cut on the pattern. It will probably say cut 10 to 12 inches longer than your waist measurement. These measure 50 inches, so it's probably a little longer than it really needs. I don't like the drawstring to be really super long because it can get tangled up inside and be uncomfortable. Now, it comes, this kit came with a drawstring threader, um, which you lace the, the drawstring in and out after you've threaded this all the way through and then you pull the drawstring through. But this has these metal um, end caps and they don't insert through this, this opening very well. So I'm gonna not use that. I'm just gonna continue using the safety pin. I have a big safety pin and I think, yeah, I better tie a knot. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot. It's not that big of a deal. Um, at the end of this end cap, that way I can pierce right through that knot so it holds on really well. And then, I'm gonna stick my uh, safety pin into the hole and then it may take me a little bit to get the knot through the hole. Um, that's okay, it stretches a lot. So once I get through, if I get this knot into that hole, there we go, things should go smooth sailing. So I'm going to feed this all the way through and um, when I'm done, uh, I'll slow the video down. Okay, so I've got the drawstring coming back through. I think I'm gonna continue to pull it. I like to make them kind of even. Now, if you don't want that much drawstring, you can, of course, just cut it off uh, at that point, but this particular drawstring is cotton, so it will continue to unravel even if I uh, tie knots in the end like I have, have done here. Um, let me see, I'm gonna pull just a little bit more. Um, so that's what's nice about having the end caps already on there. Uh, but again, I still kind of feel like this drawstring is a little bit long, even if you're going to be stretching to get it on. So I'm going to take this out, and I think I'm still uneven, but that's okay. And I probably don't have to unknot this, but I'm going to. Okay, let's pull this one back through, see if I can make it a little bit more. even. Okay, that looks a little bit more, I'm not quite. I'm just gonna tie this up really quick, okay? Turn this face side out. 
And there you have your wrestling brief. Okay, so there it is, the uh, wrestling brief. Now, um, just as a reminder, I only uh, lined the front. You can, of course, line the back, but if you're going to actually be doing active swimming, you ju just want to be advised that um, adding that extra layer of fabric to the back may cause some drag, which means it's harder for you to swim. So um, I do like to swim the front. Our front areas can be a little bit more sensitive than our back areas. And a lot of the synthetic fabrics are treated um, with chemicals. So just be aware of that's why um, I choose to line the front. Um, now, of course, you don't have to line it at all. You can just make it out of the fabric that you wish and go forth. Or even if you like this style as underwear um, by just using jersey knit, that's actually all fine and good as well. So um, I hope that you enjoy this pattern and I hope you will make uh, many of them in the future. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. It helps me out. Um, thanks again and be well.